a minute and a half. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee. Uh, thank you, Representative Pinto, for bringing this, this bill. Um, my name is Antonio Williams. Um, from 2006 to 2020, I was confined mm -hmm. inside the Minnesota Department of Corrections. It's very hard to find someone who did that amount of time and didn't do any prison industry labor. In prison, the prisoners clean the prisons, make the food prisons, prisoners eat, make the mattresses prisoners sleep on, make the license plates that are on all of your cars, and the balloons that were at the latest event or party that you were in were probably folded and packaged by prisoners. In the Stillwater facility where the prison industry compound is outside in garages, I have worked in the sweltering heat and the bitter cold for 25 or 50 cents an hour. What I was really working for, though, was a chance to visit and call my loved ones, go to the gym and work out, relieve some stress, and try to stay healthy under those conditions. Those are the things that are taken away from me if I refuse to work for the 25 cents an hour. The degrading humiliation that comes with prison labor is not just about being stripped of those human rights. It's also about literally being stripped naked, sometimes in front of other prisoners, and randomly searched for contraband in the form of packs of instant coffee, deodorant, or overpriced food items that the prison sells. The people entering prison for the first time are getting younger and younger. Many of them have never had jobs. Do we as a society believe slave labor and degrading strip searches is the right way to introduce them to the workforce? Slavery, regardless of a criminal conviction, has no place in a country that claims to be the greatest on the planet or in a state that touts itself as the nice state. I urge the committee to support HF 93, and I support HF 93 unequivocally. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. We also have Tom Evans.